I'm Maureen Hansen and I'm a part owner of Hansen's Hollow, which is a pumpkin farm by LaPorte City and we are just 20 miles south of Waterloo, Iowa. Um, we grow pumpkins, gourds, and squash on our farm. Six children and the reason that we did it to start with was to pay for their college. And now um, two of them are in college and one is already done with college. So it worked, it really helped a lot. And we have a lot of fun doing it and working together as a family. We've been growing pumpkins for 18 years and we've been doing it, selling them at our store here on the farm for six years. And one of our favorite things to do also, in addition to having lots of visitors come to our farm, is to do field trips and invite classes out to show them our pumpkins, our gourds and squash, other crops and our animals and just have a really fun day in the country. Uh, so we grow pumpkins, gourds, and squash here at Hanson's Hollow, and they're all in the same family, but there's some differences between them. So when you think of a pumpkin, you probably think, first of all, of a regular orange pumpkin that you might see at Halloween. You might carve a face in it or draw on it, and we grow lots and lots of them, and people really enjoy them. But we also do lots of other types of pumpkins. Um, we have colored pumpkins, including lots of white pumpkins, which people like to decorate with those a lot. Um, we also have a lot of weird pumpkins, and this one is a, it's called a knucklehead. Does your mom or dad ever call you a knucklehead? <laughs> That's what this pumpkin is called, because it has all these funny bumps on it, and they're lots of fun to decorate with too. And this pumpkin is another unusual one. It's called a Cinderella pumpkin, because it looks like Cinderella's coach. So those are some of the unique pumpkins that we grow. Pumpkins are in the same family of something that maybe you have eaten. Maybe when you were a baby or maybe even now you have eaten squash. And squash is something that we also love to grow here. And people really like to come out and get unusual types of squash to eat. Um, squash also are fun. They come in lots of different shapes and colors and there's lots of different ways that you can make them to eat and they are very, very good for you. They're very low in calories until you put lots of butter and brown sugar in them. Then not so much, but they're very healthy and they have lots of beta carotene in them, which is something that also is found in carrots and it's a very good nutrient for you. So you can really enjoy squash. They're very tasty and they're very healthy for you. Another thing that we really like to grow are gourds, and gourds come in lots of fun shapes and sizes. Uh, you can't eat gourds. It wouldn't hurt you if you ate them, but there's lots of better things to eat. But gourds are just really, really fun to decorate with. And this is, looks like a little pumpkin, but it's actually a gourd. And they have hard shells, and when they dry out, you can sometimes hear the seeds rattle in them. So in ancient cultures, people used gourds for musical instruments and eating utensils, and they even used really big gourds for boats. So gourds are very useful not to eat, but to have fun with and have lots of practical purposes too. So those are the things we like to grow, and we like to just enjoy all the colors of fall. So it's really fun to go shopping here at Hanson's Hollow. It's fun to pick out lots of varieties of different things, and then we sell them. We sell our crops a little differently than corn and soybeans are sold. 
they usually are sold in big batches to like a co-op and then they sell them again to a food processor but we grow our crops and then we sell them right to the consumer and so we'll sell them to people just like coming to a grocery store you can come here pick out your things and then we take it to our big scale write it down and total it up and we have to be kind of good at math we have to pay attention to the numbers and get the right total for the customer and then if a customer buys a hundred pounds or pumpkins or more they get to ring our 100 pound club bell so that's a good goal to have sometimes people get to ring the bell if they like to enjoy and buy lots of different pumpkins This is where we sell our squash and we like to sort them by different varieties because people like different types of squash. Um, once again, a pumpkin is a squash and this is a pumpkin you're very familiar with probably. This is a pie pumpkin. So if you wanted to bake a pumpkin pie, this is the kind of little pumpkin that you would use. They're much better to eat than the big jack-o-lantern pumpkins. This is called a pink banana squash because it's pink and it looks like a gigantic banana. And if you have baby brothers or sisters, this is the best kind of squash to make baby food out of. So it's a really good squash also for baking and you can make pumpkin pies with this one too. This is a totally different kind of squash. This is called a spaghetti squash. And the inside of it, when it's cooked, it strings out just like spaghetti. So it's a very fun kind of squash to cook and to eat. And it's very, very low in calories and very healthy for you. This is called a red curry squash. And this is a, a Japanese squash. So it's even kind of an education in international agriculture that this is a, a squash that originated from Japan. Um, it has very thin skin that you can eat and you can cook it in lots of different ways. This is called a buttercup squash and lots of grandmas and grandpas really like this kind of squash. It's a really old variety and on the inside it's orange like a squash but it's kind of um, dry and crumbly like a baked potato. So it's a different type of squash on the inside and it has very good flavor. This is called a celebration squash. So it's a squash that likes to have a party. Uh, the inside is actually a type of acorn squash, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but lots of people like them because you can eat them, but until you use them, you can leave them on your counter and decorate with them. <coughs> this is a butternut squash, and people really like to cook with these because you can do many, many different things with them. Um, chefs like to use them because they're very versatile and you can get lots of squash out of the top part of this part of the fruit. So if you pick a butternut squash, don't pick one with a long skinny neck, pick one with a fat neck because that has more squash in it. This is called a delicata squash and it has that name because it has a very delicate thin skin. And because the skin is thin, you can eat it. So you can cook it like a baked potato and just eat the whole thing. You can cut it up and stir fry it. You can roast it in the oven and it tastes like sweet potatoes. So sometimes people also call it a sweet potato squash. Also because it has thin skin, it doesn't store as long through the winter as some of these other squashes. So it's kind of like sweet corn. We only have it for a little bit of the year and we have to enjoy it while we have it. This is called an acorn squash, and it's called an acorn squash because it's shaped like a gigantic acorn. And people like to cut these in half and stuff them. 
Lots of people bake them in the oven with butter and brown sugar on the inside. And there's lots of other things you can do with them too, but they're just kind of the perfect size and have the perfect shape for stuffing other things in them like apples, sausage, onions, cabbage, lots of other good things that are good for you and that taste really good with the squash. So this is our pumpkin field. This year we had a little bit of a weed problem more than we normally have, but we have about four acres of pumpkins, gourds, and squash here. And four acres would mean that it's about the size of four football fields. Well, these are the pumpkin vines out in the field. And pumpkins do not grow in the wild um, on their own. They are a cultivated crop, which means that Farmers plant them intentionally to grow them. So once in a while, a wild pumpkin or a gourd vine might come up because someone left a pumpkin or a gourd and then it, it came up. But that's essentially because it was planted there too, kind of accidentally. But they don't just grow, uh, farmers plant them. And then the vines grow very long through the summer. They can grow up to even 20 feet long. They just vine around and get longer and longer. And they get little flowers on them which there's an example here's an example of a pumpkin flower and then the bees will pollinate the flower they'll carry the pollen from another part of the plant and then that will close up and make a little pumpkin and we spend lots of time picking and you can see here that there can sometimes be many pumpkins on one vine so this is a pumpkin that's nice and orange and ready to pick. This is a pumpkin that's still a little bit yellow and we'll let him grow just a little bit longer and let the sun shine on that one and get a little bit oranger. So plenty of picking and this pumpkin. This pumpkin is called a school time pumpkin because it was bred to be a pumpkin for field trips for kids like you guys because it has a nice long handle that you can carry it and it's not too heavy so every kid could carry a pumpkin like this on a field trip. Well, lots of people might think that pumpkin farming is just something you do maybe for a month in the fall, but actually we work on our pumpkin farm all year round. We just have different jobs in different seasons. So in the winter time, we spend a lot of time with the seed catalogs, picking out the kinds of pumpkins and gourds and squash that we want to grow. And it's a very fun job, but sometimes it's a hard job too because there's so many different things that we would like to grow, but we only have a certain amount of space that we can grow them in. So those are interesting choices that we have to make and then we order all of our seed. And then in the spring, we till up the soil and get a nice seed bed so that the seeds have a nice place to rest and to sprout and to grow and we plant them and we plant our pumpkins by riding on a corn planter actually it's kind of a unique process that we do so that we can plant lots of different kinds of pumpkins um, using several different people and getting lots of different things planted at one time in the summertime is when our pumpkins are growing and we have to spend lots of time weeding them because if the weeds grow too tall, like they kind of did this year, the pumpkins don't have room to get sunlight and rain and moisture, and so then they don't grow as well. So it's important to keep the weeds out of there, and that's probably the job that my kids like the least. And then finally in the fall, we start pretty much when school starts getting our farm ready and usually we have some things that we have to clean up around the farm, we have to fix some things and then we get our display things out so that we can put our store together and get everything ready to display the pumpkins um, and also our petting zoo so we get a place ready for the animals. And then finally we start picking. So then we go to the field and we see what Mother Nature did and what's there for us to pick. And that's actually a really, really fun time.
I think for sure the hardest part of raising pumpkins is the weeding because it's really, really important to get those weeds pulled and hoed and cut so that the pumpkins have plenty of room to grow. Probably the most fun, I think, is picking in the fall just because I like to see what's out there and see what Mother Nature made for us, see how they all turned out, and then welcoming visitors to our farm. I get to see people that I only maybe see once a year and just have lots of good conversations, and also field trips and bringing lots of kids out to the farm. 